Welcome to the Spherical Mask Shader Tutorial by Peerplay. In this tutorial I will explain step by step how to create a nice little custom shader. You'll learn some of the basics of writing a shader. Before we are going to write the shader, I would like to take the time to explain visually what the shader is going to do. Based on a position in world space, we will create a spherical mask setting the material of our objects to either color or grayscale. So the first thing we need in our shader is a reference to a factor 3 point in world space. The green dot represents our world position from which we will apply the shader. The shader will look through each position of the material, but for this explanation I will choose a random point to which we will check our shader. The blue dot represents that location. In our shader we will create a distance check for each point in the shader towards the world position that we send to the shader. The distance of point blue towards green is 2.58. We will then subtract from that distance a certain radius and as this happens in any direction and every point this creates a sphere. The radius is set to 2 in this example. We want to check for each point if its location is inside the radius. If it is, output its colors. If it's not, output a grayscale. The next thing we will add is a softness or a fall off to the spherical mask. This will be a fall off going inwards into the sphere. Anything between these two radius values will lerp between grayscale and color. We can do this by dividing the output of the distance minus the radius by the minus value of the softness. We then just saturate the value. The saturate function in shaders is comparable to the mathf.clampo1 in c -sharp, where the output value will always be between 0 and 1. As the output value is always between 0 and 1, we can then lerp between grayscale and color. 0 would be grayscale and 1 will be color. As we have to set a softness uh, bigger than 0, we can get values somewhere in the range between 0 and 1, if the point falls between the two radiuses. Let's increase the radius a little bit more. You can see that the point we are checking is just in the softness range and has an output value of 84% of the color. When we have this working we can add more attributes to the shader, for example emission output. Now in C-sharp we can change the real position to the raycast position of the mouse input or to the position of your main character. Imagine that everything in range of your character lights up in your game. Pretty cool, right? And you can of course increase the size or the fall off to anything that you prefer. Before we start to write our shader, I would like to ask you to check out my Patreon account. I enjoy teaching and creating tutorials and want to keep making them available to everyone. If you want to support me creating these, become a patron and as a thanks, you get access to all of the source code and project files of my tutorials. Alright, let's get started. I created a new project and all we need to test out our shader is some color texture image. I simply googled seamless texture and found this nice image. Let's go to the assets folder, right click and create, go to shader and we'll select the standard surface shader. If you are new to writing shaders, this is a good starting point, as the surface shader already calculates a lot of things for you. The downside is that you have a little less control over everything, but otherwise you would have to write how the shader reflects lighting for example. So we'll click this and we'll write here and we'll call this a spherical mask. And let's open up the shader. And first of all we've got the category of where the shader is going to be and it's set to custom, uh, I'm going to change this to pair play. Now in the shader we already have some properties like selecting a color, a main texture, uh, the glossiness and the metallic and this color will be multiplied by the main texture. If we scroll down we can see that in this fixed four we'll get the texture, main text and it's multiplied by color. So if we save the shader 
and go back to Unity. Now we can, when we right click on the shader, we can create a material based on the shader. And let's call this a spherical mask as well. Now to test out the shader, we can create a cube here. Let's make the cube a little bit bigger. And I'll drag and drop this material onto the cube. Now we want to fill this uh, image with the art that we've got. And you can already see that it's working and we can see the texture. And it's multiplied by the color that we select. So now the colors will be multiplied by the color that we select here. And we'll just keep it at white for now. Eventually we want to make a lerp between grayscale and colored output. But first we need to know how to create a grayscale. In the shader you can see that the color value called C is applied to the albedo, or at least its first three channels. It's R, G, B, red, green and blue. Grayscale is the average value of all three channels. So behind the fixed for value C we're going to make an enter and we'll type here a new float and we'll call this float grayscale. To get the grayscale we need to get the sum of the R, G and B values of C. So let's say c.r plus c.g plus c.b. And we're going to divide this by 3 because we've got 3 channels. Now we will apply this to a fixed 3 and we'll call this c-g for grayscale. And here we can set the grayscale value to all the channels. Now we just have to set instead of the albedo to the c.rgb, we're going to set this to the c-g. We'll save this. And now the shader is only reflecting the grayscale values. In the next part we will continue writing out the sphere mask shader in CG language. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you found this tutorial useful, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated with new release tutorials, subscribe to the channel.